You're listening to The Foundation of Wellness, a refreshing take on diet and lifestyle. With Jessica Dogert, a registered dietitian nutritionist, and Marisa Moon, a primal health coach. Hello, wellness lovers. This is Marisa here, reaching out to all of you that live in the Chicagoland area. If you're into fitness and nutrition, you're going to love this new event happening on Sunday, September 9th in 2018. It's called Strength in the City, and it's being held at the incredible Northerly Island Pavilion on the lakefront downtown. You and your entire family can take fitness classes, meditation classes, listen to nutrition talks, eat healthy, and stay inspired with so many other people just like us. I'm excited to announce my new talk, which is debuting at Strength in the City. It's titled, Four Transitions You Must Make to End Dieting for Good. So grab your tickets for this feel-good event and join us. Tickets are sold at strengthinthecity.com. Jessica and I will both be there, so we hope to see you. Bye. Hey, my name is Jessica, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. You can learn more about me at jessicadogert.com. So today's bonus episode is titled Joy of Missing Out. I thought it would be a really interesting topic to touch base on since the previous two episodes on this podcast emphasize the negative impact that loneliness and social isolation have on health. And the previous two episodes also emphasize the importance of social connection and needing or leaning on people and places and events to just keep us inspired to keep doing our best. So to refresh your memory, one of the longest studies from Harvard concluded that close relationships and strong community, more than things like fame and class and money and IQ, are what keep people healthy and happy in their lives, as well as just delay mental and physical decline. So I think simply put, it's really stating that loneliness is what kills, and it's as powerful as smoking or alcoholism. You know, the key to healthy aging, I really believe it's relationships, relationships, relationships. But what I recently stumbled upon is that alone time Even when it involves missing out on something like a social activity or an event, it's also apparently really good for us too. So research shows that alone time can actually boost our brain power as well as just overall well-being, you know, with some of the best ideas and work coming from this quiet inner place. So time alone, it's technically known as solitude, or really just the time that you spend getting to know yourself. And I think it could be really tough to just embrace and even just prioritize alone time, because if you think about it, I mean, we live in the society that favors our outgoing persona, which, okay, by the way, science does show that being outgoing is just a really great indicator of happiness. But I mean, on top of all of that, we also have this obsession with social media, am I right? Think Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat. You know, it just makes sense that solitude or spending time alone with yourself, it's not always going to be a priority. Yet I think what I really want to drive home here is that there can be so much joy in spending time alone with yourself. Okay, so let's actually get to the nitty gritty. I was recently introduced to the term joy of missing out, and I'm obsessed. So by Urban Dictionary Definition... It's when you are enjoying what you're doing in the here and now and not on social media, broadcasting, or just seeing what everyone else is doing. It's actually the opposite of FOMO or fear of missing out. You know, it's not feeling the need to insta-story your morning bulletproof coffee or perhaps your rooftop yoga session. It's really not feeling the need to catch up on everyone else's picture-perfect lives on social media. It's also going to be defined as a sensation of pleasure caused by social deficiency. So joy of missing out, it's really all about cherishing moments of aloneness. I think what I love most about joy of missing out is that it really embraces being present and just being in the here and now. So think about it, like instead of crawling into bed at night with your phone and scrolling through Instagram stories, you know, it's about being content with perhaps a cup of tea and like an ideas planner. And like it or not, I mean, 
we need our technology devices. I mean, think about work email and communication, but we just don't need them 24-7 glued to our hip. You know, we don't need them as much as we think we do. So joy of missing out, I think what I'm trying to get here is that it's really all about finding that balance. You know what? All of this technology, I really think that it leads to a constant distraction, and it makes people just feel very unhappy. And research proves it. It suggests that social media is what leads to things like alcohol abuse and depression. I mean, yikes, I actually believe it because I see endless status updates and photos of perhaps my friends, you know, showing off their really happy and exciting lives. And I catch myself all the time saying things like, oh, I wish I were at that Beat Bonanza sponsored trip in Boston, or I wish I were at Shore Club right now watching the Erin Water show in Chicago. I mean, major FOMO, major fear of missing out. But you know what? You guys, comparison is the thief of all joy. You know, we don't have to be on social media seeing what everyone else is always up to. You know, sometimes being in the here and now, being alone and enjoying your own company and reading a self-help book by the fireplace or sitting in silence, you know, tuning into your own thoughts and manifesting your goals and your desires and writing those goals and desires out on paper can actually be exactly what the doctor ordered. So I actually saw a quote recently when I was searching Google and It was really powerful. It's isolation is a gift. And I really, really liked that because it really just goes to show that, you know, the reflective power that comes from solitude or just spending time alone with yourself, it's really worth the break from social media and perhaps even group outings. Okay, so with all this being said, like, what's the action plan, right? You know, how can you practice alone time daily? I think... Simply put, just starting small, like try sitting quietly for 10 minutes, which could be a form of meditation, or perhaps, you know, don't bring your phone along for a 15-minute walk, or go to the farmer's market by yourself on a Saturday morning, or, you know, have a lunch date with yourself. By the way, the first thing that I talked about, meditation, it's actually a really great way to practice solitude, and it can be accomplished in truly like as little as 60 seconds a day, and research backs up the fact that it helps relieve stress, and it just really benefits the brain. But another thing that you can do to practice solitude is really monitor your digital diet kind of like you would your food diet. I mean, today many of us are so mindful about exactly what it is that we're putting into our bodies because we know that certain foods can either make us, you know, feeling really lethargic and sluggish or just energized and focused and productive. I think a perfect example is, you know, gluten can make someone feel really, you know, low energy and brain fog and things like that. Um, But I think when it comes to our minds, you know, imagine what that extra hour of just mindless scrolling is doing to it. I'm actually really obsessed with this app called Moment. It automatically tracks how much you use your iPhone each day. So if you're using your phone too much, you can actually set daily limits on yourself and be notified when you go over. And you can even force yourself off the device when you're over your limit. It's really cool, actually. Like, it'll show if you were on your phone for perhaps one hour and 16 minutes today or two hours and 48 minutes yesterday. And when you stop to realize that three hours of your day was spent on your phone, I mean, man, that's a major wake-up call. And I love their tagline, too. The tagline is, put down your phone and get back to work. It's pretty powerful. So go download Moment right now. And one more thing you could do to practice solitude is to just become more intentional with your time. So next time you find yourself about to binge watch a two-hour Bachelor in Paradise episode, guilty, just remind yourself that, you know, you could be doing so many other things instead, like catching up with a friend on the phone or just simply getting more sleep. Okay, so the major takeaway here, I really think that taking breaks from constant connectivity to just enjoy some alone time, it's going to be just as important for our overall health as eating right and moving more and sleeping more and just nurturing your tribe. Okay, so tell me, what do you plan to do this week in solitude? Email me at jessdogert at gmail.com because I really want to know. And also, 
like the Foundation of Wellness podcast on Facebook, and subscribe to our channel on iTunes and leave us a review. We love you guys.